Hi everybody and welcome back to our self-care and practices for immunity video series. I'm here again with our in-house Ayurvedic expert Ramona Lalita and we're talking today about the doshas and how we can work with our own body mind type as a way to help with immunity especially in this period. So do you want to give us again a very brief overview of the dosha system in Ayurveda and then we can talk a bit about everybody's favorite, Vata. Great. Thanks, Anne. Um, well, um, we've got this system where we break down from the higher consciousness uh, down into the, the elements and the senses and the, sense, uh, the organs of action as well. And... Um, the doshas come into the, the part where we're looking at how the elements interrelate and we've got our air and ether which is our vata, our um, pitta which is the fire and the water elements and how they interrelate and then the, the kapha which is our water and our earth elements and today we're going to be talking about vata and we see vata as that air and ether elements in the body. Um, those elements govern a lot of the movement in the body so it's a nice simple way of understanding what is vata um, if you look at the qualities uh, of air and ether we can see that they're quite dry light they move very quickly um, the ether element a lot of time we see is like where we store energy as well so it's kind of like the the space that we saw so it's a lot of the, the it's related to um, the bones in the body like the structure as well okay. um, that's one of the, the places that vata a lot of time can come into uh, kind of affect our body would you say because whenever people ask me because when I talk about Ayurveda I am no expert and I've done most of it through reading and my own self practice and also through working with practitioners like yourself and I describe the doshas as being a, a, a body mind type so it's this combination that you see in people and it's both the way they are as human beings and also how they look and how their bodies are so would you say then I mean the way I think about a vata you can sort of say a person has predominantly vata qualities is that right what would that if a per does that make is the yes. way I'm saying it correct because yeah. I'm not the yes yes the academic yes um, yes we can say that somebody could appear to have vata qualities a lot of time there are they can be quite slim um, okay. there can be either tall or short um, or shorter they um, move around very quickly um, they have drier skin drier hair. Um, they've got oh, lots of. Um, <laughs> There's lots of that. In yeah, me. got lots of that. Yeah. But, um, you know, they're they kind of got a, a lot of time. We can see by the issues as well that they okay. that they come up against. When we what look are at, the issues? Well, the seat of vata is actually in the um, in the colon. Oh. So in the large intestine, we see that's where the seat is. So a lot of the issues that come up with the large intestine we see predominantly in vata dominated people would that be like ibs or those types is that ibs I don't know. okay yes, constipation so digestive issues digestive issues i mean each because the different doshas each dosha has a different location mm. in the digestive system ah oh, okay so so different types of digestive issues yes so specifically things like constipation and yes that not moving yes of and dryness and dryness yeah. of ah uh, interesting okay yeah. yeah we can see different um kinds of uh issues also appear either vata or pitta related as well let's say uh, a really common one is the arthritis you know we see osteoarthritis which has got that dryness in the brittleness of the bones that's more of a vata dominated issue whereas the rheumatoid arthritis which has got the heat and the inflammation and the slum, yeah. that's more pitta related because that's a heat related this is a simplified yes, version of yes. looking at it which but is we, nice and it kind of shows how there is a subtlety to ayurveda whereas in we would kind of group it from a western medical perspective as it's 
it's kind of arthritis and maybe is there a similar treatment plan for both of those things I mean not from an Ayurvedic perspective but from a Western perspective or are they um, two are they seen really differently in the same way that Ayurveda would look at them from an elemental perspective and say they're two different treatments yes I would say well I'm I'm a naturopath so looking from the um, I guess the uh, herbal and um, alternative I guess uh, Western medicine perspective um, we do have different kind of treatments as well from that perspective because mm, we're okay. looking at the pathology and what's actually going on yeah. um, so I think most of, anyway that that's related to naturopathy anyway to yes. Ayurvedic and traditional Chinese medicine and all of the um, traditional views of looking at um, what's going on in the body but we're still looking at the pathology and what's actually the stages of the disease and then what's actually um, happening on a also on an elemental level but then um, at a cellular level as well and similarly actually from the Ayurvedic perspective we're also taking into consideration those when we're look those aspects when we're looking at what's actually happening so we do have that that's because Ayurveda is a science we're still looking at the pathophysiology of uh, a condition in the body and how it's progressing and where to actually nip it in in the butt as well so like so like right now for us with COVID and with winter coming up in here in Melbourne what kinds of um, in terms of like that Vata dominant personality or body type or you know the windiness that we're experiencing today how can we what are the certain things that you want to watch out for so that your Vata doesn't go out of balance or what are those kinds of um, yep. what, what would be the signs that you'd want to nip in the bud? Well, we want to surely look at our digestion okay. and, and we're going to care for our digestion. Uh, we're going to come back to that Dinacharya, the daily routine, which starts actually the night before. I know a lot of people don't want to hear it, but it does start the night before. Um, but we're thinking about uh, what time we're going to wake up in the morning. Yes. And actually, we, we see one of the really good times to wake up is between 3 to 6 a.m. Again, most people don't want to wake up in that time, <laughs> but that's when we can actually get uh, the most energy from the environment. The sun's coming up around that time now because of daylight savings. Um, and then we are going to be looking at uh, cleansing our mouth uh, by brushing our teeth and doing our tongue scraping and all of those activities to take out any of the bacteria that's in the mouth and cleanse it as the first point of digestion. Mm. Um, so the that's mouth important. is the first point of digestion. And that's something yes. that I introduced in one of the self-care videos that we did, the idea of tongue scraping. Tongue scraping, yep. First thing in the morning, best thing you could do. It's so gross, but yes. the best thing you could do. Yes, and oil it. pulling as well. So mm -hmm. taking out um, any of the other impurities, also great for your teeth as well. Um, and then drinking some warm water. And then you can go and drink some horrible tea. For a vata person, we don't want something too dry, okay. so that's important. Um, this is again, we, we're people that have not only one element, we've got vata, pitta and kapha as well in the body, but if we're just looking at a very simplistic model and yes. looking at not wanting to raise that in the body, a vata people can usually take most spices and balance of all of them, including all of the salty and the sweet kind of taste um, and spices um, but something really great and balancing would be like a fennel tea or even tulsi, tulsi I think yeah. that's really supportive of immunity also because tulsi is very good for um, the nervous system as well where vata is very much disturbed yeah and, and I yeah. think at the moment this is important because a lot of people will find their vata out of balance because life routine is out of balance and so yes. their minds are out of balance and a lot of people are experiencing anxiety because they don't have any control of the external world yes and the beauty of Ayurveda is that it can help support people not just physically but also mentally so even things like a fennel tea can yes. help calm the vata down and and help support with things like sleep because I know that's when my vata is out of balance I can yes. see that I'm getting anxious and I see that I'm not sleeping so well yes is there any final one takeaway that we could give to calm down vata in the 10 seconds we have left um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it would be to practice uh, so do the, the build a routine that's routine. very important yes. for the that air and, and the mind going every kind of 
uh, moment and then also do some physical practice and pranayama which is grounding grounding that's really important so some physical practice during the day in the morning the best time very good for setting a good uh, energy for the day as well so grounding activities there would be even things simple like Tadasana and Pashimottanasana, Pashimottanasana. standing grounding postures yes yin yoga, yin yoga low to yep. the ground nadi shodhana breathing practice so balancing Gentle. the channels yeah yes yep nothing too uh, uplifting uplifting yep yeah no inversions no kapalbhati yes keep it calm keep it really calm and then gentle and then you're starting your day of course and then there's a whole lot of different so many and, things yeah the Birds, things you can do yeah. herbs yeah, yeah. mantras Mantra, yeah. yeah beautiful well thanks for the introduction on vata dosha and more on the other doshas coming up soon yeah.